Hi, this is Sharon Milan at Kauai Community Co College with a short introductory lesson about listening. So my mother-in-law used to call me up and when I would answer the phone, I would know that I was not going to be talking for quite a while. So somewhere 30 minutes into the conversation, she'd say, oh, how was your day? And I'd know it was my turn to talk. Well, we don't want listening to just be looked at as a competition between who's talking and who's listening and whose turn it is. So let's take a few minutes and look at listening, what it is and what it isn't. First, what is the difference between hearing and listening? At first glance, you might think they're the same thing, but listening is an active process. Hearing just means that you hear the sound, but listening is actually the process of receiving, constructing meaning from and responding to spoken and or nonverbal messages. Yes, believe it or not, there is an international association of listening and they've come up through a lot of discussion with this definition. Uh, let's take that apart for a minute. So first of all, receiving, okay? When you hear, you receive. So we're gonna receive the message, but then that message has to make sense to us in our mind. We have to construct meaning from it and be able to respond to uh, that message in either a spoken or a nonverbal message. So even a head nod, right? It's acknowledging that you did hear it, it does mean something to you, and that you can physically respond to that message. So what are some of the benefits of listening? And what are some of the problems and how can we become better listeners? So the benefits. Well, the biggest benefit is that people like others that listen. Uh, there was a survey and they found out that 82% of the people would prefer to talk with people that are great listeners, as opposed to 18% that wanna go hear great speakers. So if you are a listener, you are in great demand. Developing your listening skills has many benefits. It makes you a better family member, makes you a better daughter, son, parent, grandparent, and it helps you to get along with your siblings and everyone in the family. It helps you in romantic relationships. If you want to get married someday and have a long-term relationship with someone, it helps you to, to get along with them, to discuss your differences and enjoy your similarities. It helps you to become a better friend and a better student. It helps with your study skills. But there are some problems that come with listening and it's not always easy. So let's take a look at where these problems might happen. So if we go back to our model of communication, we can see here that encoding, which is where we take the idea that's in our head and try to put it into words, then it will go through this channel and the word comes to the ears of the listener and they have to decode it. So if you remember, we have differences in the way we understand things, differences in perception. And I'm not sure if I showed this to you before, but if not, this is a picture of an old woman or a young woman, like a young can-can dancer. And it just depends on how you look at this picture, what you see. If you study it a while, you can see both the can-can girl with the feather in her hair and uh, the profile of her face, or the old woman with the white hair and the black shawl and the two eyes and the big giant nose. But people see things differently. We can hear the same word and understand it differently. And so a good listener is aware that we see things differently. Okay, there's two basic places where the problems happen in decoding. And again, remember decoding is where we take the word and we, and we make meaning out of that. So we hear the word 
dog, D-O-G, and then we understand that that is a dog. What we maybe don't know is if we've never heard the word before, we might not understand the message. Or maybe the speaker only told us dog, and so we don't know if this is a pet dog or a big dog or a little dog or an indoor dog or an outdoor dog. So we're, we're not really sure how to decode it. Maybe they said it, but we just didn't hear it. We weren't able to process it. The other reason we have problems is with this coding is we're distracted. We don't put time and interest into understanding the message. We're just like, they can say whatever, it doesn't matter to me, I'm not interested. And we'll go ahead and keep typing on our phone or our computer and not even look up at the person. So if we're distracted or we're not paying close attention or we're thinking about other things and not focusing on the message, that's where the decoding problems happen. There's also problems with encoding. And again, encoding is the person who's putting words to the message. So a lot of times we don't have the skill to, to encode. We don't really take time and meditate or think about our own ideas, write about them, refine them before we sit down to communicate with them. We don't develop our own vocabulary. We don't practice we don't practice communicating with people enough, so we don't sometimes have the skill to say what that picture in our head is. We don't have the ability to say anything but my dog. We haven't practiced the idea that that my dog is a pet chihuahua that sits on my lap and is hyperactive. So if we give those descriptors, then we've done a better job with our encoding. A lot of times we have the skill. We're, we're perfectly capable of doing those uh, descriptions, but we're lazy or we're distracted. We, we just don't want to put the time and work into delivering the best message as possible. And, and not to make you feel nervous about that, you know, we sometimes don't want to be overly specific in oral communication and people will become very disinterested. But we want to think about how we want that message to sound to the other person. So what can you do to improve your listening skills? Well, here are here's a list of the major listening skills. So we need to think about what is the purpose? What is the purpose for me listening? Is it to evaluate someone? Uh, evaluative listening is, is when we have to make a judgment or maybe give someone a raise or determine if they're going to be the person for that job or listening to something that they've talked about and determine if it's true or false, use our critical thinking skills. Paraphrasing is a great listening skill. That's where we take and we restate what someone says. For example, if somebody says, I'm going to take my dog for a walk along the river, you simply rephrase that and say, you're gonna walk your dog today along the riverbank? Reflecting, that's a skill after you've heard a lecture or maybe had a really intense discussion with your friend, you come home and you open your notebook, take out your pencil and paper and kind of write down what were the main ideas. Interpreting, this is when we have complicated information and we have to figure out what it means. Summarizing, that's very similar to paraphrasing, but a lot of times we'll have more information. We might listen to somebody talk for 10 minutes and then give back to them. So what I heard you say that were your, uh, your main points today were, and then you'll list off what were the main points that the speaker gave. Probing, that is simply asking questions. Ask the speaker questions about what they're talking about so you can gain more understanding. Give feedback. Sometimes people just want you to listen so you can tell them how they're doing. Now we are going to give feedback to other speakers during our speech, and I've given you very specific guidelines for how to give feedback. I want you to comment on things like vocal variety, movement, gestures, eye contact. I want you to comment on how well a person organized their speech, how, how, uh, they cited their sources and how valuable the supporting material was. 
in a speech. So we'll be using giving feedback in this class. Supporting. That's the type of listening that we give when your friends or someone you're listening to is having a difficult time. A lot of times people don't want to hear your advice. They just want to know you're there and you support them. So for example, if someone you know just had their heart broken by um, their boyfriend or girlfriend, then you might want to be there to support them and let them know that you're, you're here for them. And finally, checking perceptions. That's where we say, I heard you say you had a small dog. It's a chihuahua, is that correct? Or did I hear you wrong and you actually have a large dog? Okay, so we're asking the speaker what was it they were trying to say. So these are just a few of the top listening skills. Something you can do that actually enhances listening, and this might sound different to pretend to listen, but what we have found is that people to pretend to listen actually listen more. And, and so it's not a bad thing because it actually helps you to engage. And here's a method to bring that home, especially when you're watching a speaker during a speech. So sit up straight, lean forward, this engages you attend to the message, nod, and track the speaker. It's called slant. And if we were in the classroom, I would be watching you to see if you are actually implementing the slant during the speeches. We'll see some of this on the internet as well in our Zoom rooms. We can see the body posture and behavior, and I want you to try to actively engage in listening to the speeches this semester. My favorite approach to listening has to do with the Chinese character to listen. So if we break that character apart, we have, we have the eyes for the attention, the open heart, and the ears. And when we put this all together, this is the Chinese character for to listen. Another cool way to think about this is like a tea party. So when you're preparing tea, you have an open hand. You prepare it with a slow and steady motion and allow the environment to be free of stress. You sit back and you have a willingness to listen by serving another before yourself. And I think that says it all, that listening is really about the other person. It's, it's about having the patience to just relax and take in another person's perspective. And so I think that the tea party is a great analogy for listening. So I hope you'll have great success this semester in improving your listening skills. There's quite a bit more specific information in some of the reading and exercises.